Kia ora Fano. this is Kyle from CSN and today we'll be breaking down the lightweight battle between Islam Makachev and Aotearoa's finest Dan Nahaman Hooker who are set to collide in Abu Dhabi at UFC 267. Before we get into it, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Now that we're done with the formalities, let's get cracking. Habib 2.0 was supposed to be facing former lightweight champ Rafael Dos Anjos, who was forced to withdraw due to injury, meaning this ill-fated matchup was cancelled for a third time as both fighters had previously pulled out after contracting COVID-19. I don't know about you, but I've got deja vu. Islam or most likely managerial menace Ali Abdelaziz took to social media to call out the Brazilian and cast doubt over the legitimacy of his injury. Dos Anjos was quick to rebuke these accusations, firing back in scathing fashion that unlike Islam he doesn't have another man to pay his bills, referring to dominance MMA pimp Abdelaziz. While those two exercised their Twitter fingers, Dan Hooker accepted the call to war and stepped in on short notice to face the most avoided fighter in the division. Number six ranked Hooker has an eight and three record since returning to lightweight in June 2017, where he knocked out Ross Pearson with a brutal knee in front of a home crowd in Auckland, earning him a performance of the night bonus. A million times that it just naturally flowed out and came out. New Zealand's own Dan, the hangman. Those three losses have been to formidable opponents. Edson Barbosa was top 10 at the time and considered to be one of the best strikers in the division. Dustin Poirier is the current number one ranked lightweight and favourite to take the gold when he fights for the title later in the year. The hangman battled it out with Poirier in an uncompromising brawl that went all five rounds, eventually losing by unanimous decision but earning a well-deserved fight at a night bonus. In January this year, he lost in devastating fashion to former Bellator lightweight champion Michael Chandler, who is currently sat proud at number four in the UFC lightweight rankings. The 31-year-old Tarmaki Makaro native... No Tarmaki Makaro. Hey, don't be scared. Give it a go has become known as a brawler and a striker in the world of MMA after starting out his career as a pro kickboxer winning the World Kickboxing Federation X Rules Championship at Welterweight and the King in the Hooker Ring middleweight title. Good one. Oh, and right on cue! Hooker lands the overhand right, we were talking about the left hook! Quick glance at his record would suggest that he's as much a grappler as he is a striker. He has seven KO finishes on his record matched by seven submission victories. However, only two of those submissions have come during his seven year 17 fight tenure in the UFC, both of those by guillotine originating from a standing position. His hands are definitely his main weapon, but it's not all he has in his arsenal. Standing at six foot, the hangman has found success by using his height and reach and sleeping his opponents with well-timed knees, which he did against Jim Miller after he attempted to change levels and shoot for the takedown, and against Ross Pearson who was attempting to close the distance on Hooker. Both of these tactics have previously played a huge role in Islam's fighting game plan, which will surely bring some confidence in Hooker being able to withstand the onslaught. Dan is a high pressure fighter who rarely gives his opponents any space to breathe, serving up a constant barrage of strikes to the head and body, causing even the most experienced fighters to abandon any dreams of success on the feet. Just here, nice body shots to an uppercut and he just keeps ripping uppercuts, body shots, uppercuts, body shots. If you think your key to victory is by taking Hooker to the ground, you're shit out of luck. Hooker's takedown defense is impeccable at 80%, meaning that four out of every five attempted takedowns yield no result, which in the current climate where we see more and more fighters with wrestling backgrounds and relying on their grappling to grind out a victory is even more impressive. Oh, Hooker won't even let the New Zealand government and their harsh COVID restrictions take him down. City areas for people to get outside and to uh, spread their legs when they are... Um... Up in sticks and relocating to Las Vegas, where he'll be joined by his family for the foreseeable future upon his return from Abu Dhabi. In the lead up to this fight, he's been taking advantage of every facility available at the state of the art UFC Performance Institute, including their in house nutritionists, physiotherapists, and strength and conditioning experts, leading Hooker to have every confidence in his preparation for this fight despite the quick turnaround and short training camp. His confidence has been scoffed at by Islam's manager, coach, and teammates, who have all come out to downplay the Kiwis' chances and billing their fighter as some sort of invincible demigod who is going to destroy the hangman. But Dan isn't convinced and relishes being the underdog, stating, He puts his pants on like I put my pants on. He ain't Superman, I'm very confident. He's been working alongside elite wrestling coach Frank Hickman at Syndicate MMA in Vegas, enduring daily shark tanks so that he can go out and prove his grappling credentials against Makachev, who he has said he wants to completely outclass. 
He's not going to be looking for a Hail Mary. He wants to beat him convincingly. And he's even asked that the fight be made a five-rounder so that he has an extra 10 minutes to prove his point. Hooker believes that if he comes out victorious, he puts himself firmly in the title picture. The betmakers don't share Hooker's sentiments, heavily favouring Makachev's chances of victory. Do you agree with the odds or is Dan's quiet confidence in his abilities cast the seed of doubt? Let us know what you think in the comments below. However this fight plays out, we know that Kiwis will be proud of their warrior. Islam Makachev has an impressive 20-1 record in MMA, that solitary loss coming over six years ago to Adriano Martins at UFC 192. Since then he's amassed eight straight victories, three by submission, one by KO and four hard-fought decisions. His wrestling is up there with the very best, successfully completing two of every three takedown attempts using a variety of techniques and sweeps. Once on the ground, he utilises a vast array of submissions, including arm bars, knee bars and every choke variation known to man. Javier Mendez and Khabib Nurmagomedov are convinced that Makachev is a future lightweight champion, and who can blame him? Islam has looked impressive on his current run, most recently decimating Thiago Moises and finishing him off with a rear naked choke in the fourth round. In that fourth round, Islam threw his opponent over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes and paraded him around the cage before finishing I tell, him. I tell you guys before, I'm gonna finish him. I have to be humble, but I tell you guys before, I'm gonna finish him because this guy not my level. Whilst praise has been given to Hooker for stepping in on short notice, props have to be given to Makachev for accepting the changing opponent. After starting his camp and preparing for a radically different fighter in Dos Anjos, both stylistically and anthropometrically. Initially, he was training for a short, multi-disciplined fighter with a reasonably short reach, but faces the complete opposite in Hooker. So he appeared to have a classic wrestler versus striker confrontation on our hands. In spite of AKA trainer Javier Mendez lauding Makachev's striking abilities, he has to be cautious in getting into a brawl with Hooker, who has a four and a half inch reach advantage over the Dagestani. And unlike you and me, he knows how to put 4.5 inches to good Jesus. use. This advantage is amplified by Hooker's footwork, who is constantly moving and hunting down his opponents, changing levels at every opportunity. Both fighters represent gyms with kickboxing in the name, being American Kickboxing Academy and City Kickboxing, but many believe that grappling will determine the outcome of this fight. I've already mentioned Dan's takedown defence, but how will those statistics fare after fighting a bloke who comes from a place where kids learn how to suplex before they learn how to walk? I'm torn for this one. My head says that Islam does exactly what is expected of him, but my heart lies with a country where I now call my home and I hope the hooker can pull a rabbit out of the hat. There you have it. How'd you see this one going? Leave your picks in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to the Combat Sports Network. Give CSN a follow on Instagram and Facebook and check out our website www.combatsportsnetwork.co.nz and sign up for access for a plethora of homegrown combat sports events and fights from around the world. I'm Kyle, this is the Combat Sports Network. Until next time, ta-da.